There probably is um, a, psycho a psychologist's word for fear of inconvenience. I wonder what that might be. On this day when we brought to you the idea of the man bag and where we might go with this in the future, the Merce, for example, all those delightful shorts with their own integral passport pouch. I'm going to call it a pouch. That's a three-pouch um, design going on right there. And we saw the wonderful picture of Fernando Pessoa as well. My image is being a bit slow to come to the screen. I hope you are seeing um, a nice pair of... Oh, there you go. You are seeing a nice uh, um, set of... Uh, are they actually underpants with some special security pockets in them, I wonder? You, I don't suppose you'd have seen Fernando Pessoa wearing those. Uh, there he is, rocking it down the street there in Lisbon. I wonder... Uh, which of his many Pessoa personas he was in in that particular frame of mind walking down the street that day. Talking of frames of mind then, let's have a look at this uh, interesting idea from George Reyes, and I'll bring it onto the screen for you now. Um, do Americans fear uh, inconvenience? Uh, and we're going to be talking through that today on this Iberian FM phone. You can call in on 913-590-303 if you wish. And, uh, and let me know what you're thinking about this. 913-590-303. Let me make sure uh, we are truly connected to the... Uh, we are indeed. Um, but let me get started perhaps first and, uh, and and let you know what I'm talking about here. Two cents worth of advice then uh, from George Ray's. My loser American two cents worth of advice for those interested in moving to Portugal. Um, it's Is that someone ringing in already? Or just, just a message? Okay, I think that was just a message. You're okay. Yeah, let me get started uh, past the uh, the first sentence here uh, before we have a, um, a, a to and fro on this. Um, it, my loose American two cents worth of advice, not mine, but George Reyes, R-E-I-S, Reyes, uh, for those interested in moving to Portugal. It's been said the only thing Americans truly fear is inconvenience. My fellow Americans, says George, the only thing you have to fear in Portugal, and this is not a small matter, is inconvenience. The conveniences Americans demand are only made possible by their maniacal work ethic and their worship of market efficiency that is the American religion derived from English and Northern European Protestant sensibilities. Well, I knew it would be our fault, um, as Europeans have noted for centuries. And the Portuguese Nobel laureate José Saramango notes in his novel The Stone Raft. There's lots in this. And that's why I'm delighted to share it with you. The Iberian Peninsula is related to Europe, but it's not Europe. It belongs in the South Atlantic between Africa and Latin America. As Agostinho de Silva said many times, the Portuguese are not European and they invent new meanings for the word debacle when they pretend they are Europeans. This helps explain their insane venture known as the Atlantic slave trade, which they pioneered and continue to do penance for today. What is the difference then between European and Iberian culture here on the Iberian FM phone in today? For Agostinho, Europeans made a pact with the devil to sacrifice their humanity for economic gain and technological advance. Like every moral bargain, there are good and bad consequences. We have life-changing technology on the one hand and money-grubbing money -grubbing domination of the southern hemisphere on the other. For Agostinho, there's an invisible border between Northern Europe and Southern Europe. Northern Europeans are born to work to build wealth at any personal cost. Southern Europeans with stronger ties to Africa and South America are born to live their lives with family, with good communal meals, with work as a necessary burden for now, but hopefully not forever. As Agostinho famously said, man is not born to work. He's born to create to be that poet on the loose. What a lovely connection with uh, Fernanda Pessoa, whose birthday it was yesterday. People have misread this as a celebration of sloth, but it's not. It's an assertion of each person's divine spark of uniqueness and connection to all other divinely created beings and things. It's also why you can't get coffee to go. Oh, my goodness, I saw some English people asking for takeaway coffee in my cafe. I nearly stepped in. Sorry, that's not what George Reyes is saying here. That's what I noticed a couple of days ago. That's why you can't get coffee to go or ice in your drink in Portugal without begging for it. That's interesting about the ice. Uh, my parents are Portuguese, says George, and my first visit there was in 1972 when I was five. I adore the Portuguese, but as an American, they make me mental. <laughs> as a New Yorker, I say it with no pride. 
uh, that I say I fume when I don't get what I want quickly. This is an authentic and honest piece, is it not? In the 90s, I went to the Portuguese National Library to pretend I was an aspiring academic when all I really wanted was a nice lunch at a sorda de marisco. Oh, that sounds good. Down the street. I asked the librarian where I could make photocopies from a book, and she told me to leave the book at the desk and come back in two weeks to pick up the copies. <laughs> I collapsed to the floor and changed my life plans on the spot. When I recovered, I broke out in song as in a Broadway musical with God Bless America in my pathetic impersonation of Kate Smith. Other than superlative meals in people's homes, pining for American convenience and breaking out into God Bless America is the only consistent feature of every trip I've made to Portugal since 1972. But all is forgiven when the Portuguese serve lunch because lunch matters more to them than any damn economic concern. I should note this is only, the, I, I should note this only applies to reliably, this only applies reliably to Portuguese over 50 years old. I'm afraid to learn about the sensibilities of younger Portuguese who seem to have assimilated into a homogenized international culture that has them all speaking perfect YouTube English. YouTube English. It's creepy to me, but I'm in no position to judge them, says George. I just recoil in fear of seeing a new form of colonialist cultural erasure spread like a fungal infection. Ow. At my age, Portugal is a country of family ghosts, emotional baggage, contradictory feelings. The soup that nourishes is the soup that poisons. I'll probably end up in an untrendy corner of Portugal, even though I've shed my sentimental feelings about the country. I'd say that's a good thing, a sign of late maturing. Chekhov famously said, if you fear loneliness, don't marry. To which I would add, if you fear inconvenience, don't move to Portugal. And nobody needs that fear-shedding advice more than I do. This is George Ray's speaking. I hope this all goes a little way toward explaining why inconvenience in Portugal is not a bug, but a feature. A feature that may even humanise you to slow down a bit. Who knows? You might even find your inner poet on the loose. And you can be inspired by Pessoa, can't you, as you've heard today. I do hope finally then, says George Ray's, I do, I hope I do. And I hope the same for you, no matter where you choose to live. So thank you, George, for that. Really good. And um, let's hope, let's hope as a final word that we can all uh, find our inner poet and, and set them free. Uh, that's absolutely wonderful. The poet on the loose, then. Let's set loose our poets in a Fernando Pessoa style. Americans fear a lot more these days, uh, says uh, says Aviva, and uh, we've got a, a, a question, a, a, some applause from George Jensen as well, I think, liking this. Uh, thank you, Antonio F., for showing us what a tilde is. Thank you very much. And Sue's adding to what she said earlier on about the cafe. At the cafe, I said that I, I, them, I then said aloud, all greetings and words are new to more smiles. Then the man switched uh, to French, no Wi-Fi, so no more Googling Translate to help, a good thing. Yeah, the shared language of French in central Portugal can be very helpful too. And by Randy with a bon dia. Hi, hi Andy, how you doing, mate? Just back from a walk through the beautiful Bayrada, just popped in to say hi and we'll watch on catch up. It's been, it was been fun this morning, nice and easy going one for hump day. Andy, I think you'll enjoy it. And we were trying to teach Sarah a bit more Portuguese this morning. And uh, I, I like this seal of approval, as well as from George Jensen, a round of applause. We're getting one from our Portuguese friend, Antonio F. there. Um, I don't know if that's for the George Ray's piece or for the show in general, but I'm going to take it. Thank you very much, Antonio. And we'll be back again tomorrow with Veronica, that American in Portugal down there in the Algarve, the English gentleman in Lisbon, Carl Hyde. And we'll talk to them tomorrow uh, on Thursday and tomorrow evening, talking about uh, cars in Portugal, buying a car uh, in Portugal with Jerry Lawler, who with a presentation on that Expats Portugal at 7.30 and at 9.00. Uh, we'll be talking to the Dream Team, uh, as we do every Thursday evening. And it's my joy to, to facilitate that discussion. So perhaps see you at one or two or all three of those if you want to do the treble like Man City did and be uh, on our show tomorrow morning, uh, the webinar in the evening and the Dream Team thereafter. Take care. Have a great day. Have a truly bon dia, folks, and see if you can set uh, free, uh, set loose your inner poet today uh, in honour and um, awe of Fernando so take care. Have a great day. Bye for now. In Portugal, there's a YouTube show full of fun facts you need to know. Carl
rings a bell and the members show to the GMP morning show. Featured guests will come and they will blow your mind. The audience will do so in kind. The little vanity mixed with some insanity on the morning show with GMP. Good morning, Portugal, and I'd like to welcome you to another fantastic day. Hey, you gumpers. 